Well, good morning, folks. Good morning. Make sure my things are. Yeah, it's on. Good morning. Well, we're welcoming you to the service today, and we're looking forward to a great time of meeting with the Lord in His house. All right, those of you watching by Facebook and YouTube and uh, our website, we're glad that you're joining here with us, okay? All right, choir's got a wonderful song that uh, they're going to be singing. For the last three Sundays, I've preached on a text from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. God is our wonderful counselor, uh, mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So today, I'm going to be preaching, finishing out a series on the name of Christ, preaching on His name is a mystery. And we'll get into the message later. But the choir is going to sing a song this morning. Uh, the title again, I remember the words, but I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Hope that you aren't either. Keep sharing the good news. Okay? Choir. <laughs> There's a cloud of many witnesses with Christ in heaven above. Watching as we run this race, they cheer us on in love. There are faces we have seen before and more we've never known. They fought the battles, took their stand. We reap what they have sown. So I'm not ashamed to claim the name of Jesus. I am not ashamed to tell the world he's mine. Gladly I'll proclaim this gospel to all people. I am not ashamed, I will claim his name. Now I take my stand in Jesus and serve the Lord today. I give my strength and purpose, I sing and work and pray, and though all the world may mock me, or walk uncaring by, I'll stay with Christ my Savior, His name I'll not deny. So I'm not ashamed to claim the name of Jesus. I am not ashamed to tell the world He's mine. Gladly I'll proclaim this gospel to all people. I am not ashamed, I will claim His name. So I'm not ashamed to claim the name of Jesus. I am not ashamed to tell the world he's mine. Gladly I'll proclaim this gospel to all people. I am not ashamed, I will claim his name. I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed. Song books out. Are you glad to be in church this morning? Amen. Let's try that again. Are you glad to be in church this morning? Amen. Amen. Go ahead and stand with me. Turn to 669. We did this song on Wednesday night, and it is a wonderful song. Since the Savior found me, pardon all my sins. I have had the joy and living hope within. Amen. Let's sing that first, second, and the last verse, all right? Since the Savior found me, pardon all my sin. I have had the joy and living hope within. Gone is all the shame and sorrow of the past. They're underneath the precious blood of Christ at last. Saved, 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 I'm happy on the way. Saved, 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 I love Him more each day. Saved, 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 I know He's mine, He shout. He saves and keeps and sanctifies me by His power. Now hold on one second. 
This is Sunday morning, and I can barely hear y'all, all right? I'm hearing myself, so I'm going to quiet it down, and I'm going to ask you guys to pick it up a little bit, all right? Everyone has a psalm book in their hands, 669. Let's try the second verse. Here we go. Since the Savior found me, all to him I owe. For his precious blood has washed me white as snow. Now no condemnation, happy as can be. I'm glad that Jesus justifies and sets me free. Saved, 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 I'm happy on the way. Saved, 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 I love him more each day. Saved, 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 I know he's mine each hour. Good, sing it out. By his power, since the Savior found me, I have perfect rest. Living in the realms of joy and happiness. Leaning on my Savior, looking for that day when he shall come to catch his reigning bride away. Save, 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 I'm happy on the way. Save, 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 I love him more each day. Save, 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 I know he's mighty shower. He saves, he keeps, and sanctifies me by his power. I think we're almost there, Miss Amy. Let's try that third verse one more time. Give it all you got unto the Lord this morning. Here we go. Ready? Since the Savior found me, I have perfect rest. Living in the realms of joy and happiness. Leaning on my Savior, looking for that day when he shall come to catch his waiting right away. Save, save, save. I'm happy on the way. Save, 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 I love him more each day. Save, 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 I know his mighty shower. He saves and keeps and sanctifies me by his power. Are you glad to be saved? Amen. Amen. You can be seated this morning. Thank you. All right. All right, again, we welcome you. Take your bulletin and look there with me, and we'll go over a few announcements that are taking place. Choir practice, don't forget choir, this afternoon at 5 o'clock we have our practice. Amy has picked out several new songs that we're going to be trying to be working on. And then uh, 6 p.m. service, having our Bible trivia. Now that's, I think, on the back back there, on the back page. Uh, has questions there, you can answer those questions, come in ready uh, tonight. And we got some, we give out some candy for those who can get the answers correct, okay? Homeschool day this coming Friday here at Central, we have our homeschool group that meets there a couple times a month here. It's this Friday at 10.30 in the morning. Uh, then, of course, visitation. This coming Saturday at 10 a.m. Come on out and go visiting with us. And then um, Youth Sunday is a special day in our church. Next Sunday is Youth Sunday the 31st, and we're going to have the young people will be taking over all the parts of the services. I think, Daniel, we've got three young guys going to preach. Um, Four young guys, so two in the morning, two at night, or something like that, three in the morning, one at night. Okay, he'll have it all lined out. Daniel's in charge of this, and so we're looking forward to it. And then we're going to have a pie-eating, baking contest that night. Um, come ready, bake some pies. We'll have some judges to judge it, and then we'll have some other little pies they're going to buy from the store for the pie-eating contest, okay? Uh, should be exciting time after the service where we go. We usually have a time afterwards to try to encourage the young people. Yes. Okay, we need you to sign up and enlist in the foyer uh, if you're going to do be involved with the pie eating contest part of it. Uh, so Daniel can know how many of those pies or little pies to get to do that. I know Carrie has signed up for it, right, Carrie? Amen. Eli has signed up for it. There will not be any more pies left <laughs> after the two of those start eating it. I think we need to get Mr. Jerry. Mr. Jerry, yeah. you have been voluntold. Yeah. I'll be there Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jerry can eat, I know. Um, just to kind of let you know some things here, uh, see the picture of Jeremiah and Heather and the family. Uh, this precious family came out of Central here, and they have a church they've started in Portsmouth, Anchor Baptist Church. Uh, keep praying for them. Good things are happening for them. Jeremiah is still uh, out at sea for the next few months, but he'll be back. And the church is seeing people saved even while he's gone. And things are great and things are happening over there, so keep praying for the Cattells family. We don't want to forget them. Uh, looking ahead, this coming February the 20th and 21st, Dr. S.M. Davis is coming here to Central Baptist Church. I've never had Dr. Davis with us. We're looking forward to it. 
And on Saturday evening, we'll have a couple's dinner retreat, if you say, for that one night. And he'll be speaking to couples of all ages, not just young couples, anybody uh, can come to that. And then also um, on that day, on the 21st, we'll have Dr. Davis will take over Sunday school. So that morning, kind of consider it like a church service, but not just come out like you would for Sunday school. All adults and teen classes, as far as I know, will be here in the auditorium, okay? Teachers take note of that. And it should be a great day, and he'll preach to us. And then Sunday morning and Sunday night. So wonderful, wonderful time about the family and marriage and all those good things, not just for couples. All right. Faith Promise, as uh, we're seeing, is doing well. We need to uh, keep faithful in giving your Faith Promise. Uh, I think we got some birthdays Carrie will get to in just a minute. I'm going to ask our ushers to come at this time. Let's go ahead and do an offering, fellas. The guys are not passing the plates. They're holding the plates as they come along your aisle. You can give. Appreciate your faithfulness in your giving. The work here needs to keep shining the light and also to our missionaries around the world, right? Okay. Amen. Father, may you bless this offering today. We thank you for it. Thank you, Lord, for your people. And Lord, that you give to us. Without you, we could have nothing. And truly, without you, we are nothing. So today I pray that you'll be glorified in this your place through our sacrificial giving, and through our faithful, obedient giving. And Lord, I pray that you'll get glory again. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, guys, we're going to change things up a little bit this morning. We added um, another song that we want to do. So, uh, Mr. Daniel and Mr. Lashley, wherever you are, I'm going to have you guys come up. We're going to do our special this morning at this time. I like this song. Christians all around the world have known whom they believed. They served God and surrendered all to serve Him faithfully. But there are those who've watered down the truths that they once preached about. 
How can we sit idly by? We must keep the standard high. Stand strong, stand firm. Represent the cross to all the world. Don't bend, don't break. Stand for what is true and choose to stay. God will never let you stand alone. So stand strong. God is looking for someone to stand for truth and right. One who go unto the lost and tell them of his light. Few have answered to his call, and fewer still have stayed. Christians, it is time to rise. The name of God proclaim. Stand strong, stand firm. Represent the cross to all the world. Don't bend, don't break. Stand for what is true and choose to stay. God will never let you stand alone. So stand strong. Stand with those around you. Change what they believe. Stand that they may falter. Your children of the King. Stand with Christ who calls you to trust Him and obey. We must lift the banner high. Together we will say, Stand strong, stand firm. Represent the cross to all the world. Don't bend, don't break. Stand for what is true and choose to stay. God will never let you stand alone. No, God will never let you stand alone. No, God will never let you stand alone. So stand strong. Stand strong. Be thou exalted by seraphs and angels. Be thou exalted, saints with song. Saints in their anthems of rapture adore thee. Thine be the glory forever. Amen. I'm sorry, Miss Amy. I didn't realize my mic was off. Please forgive me. We're going to try that one more time. Let's try that second verse. All right. Thank you, Mr. Daniel. Here we go. Be thou exalted, O Son of the Highest. 
gracious Redeemer, our Savior and King, one with the Father, co-equal in glory. Here at thy foot, so our homage we bring. Be thou exalted by seraphs and angels. Be thou exalted with harp and with song. Saints in their anthems of rapture adore thee. Thy be the glory forever. Amen. All right, now that you sang two verses, do you know it a little bit better? I think we're starting to get it. All right, let's try that third verse. Here we go. Be thou exalted, O Spirit eternal. Be thou exalted, O Spirit eternal. Dwell in your hearts. Keep us holy within. Feed us each day with thy heavenly manna. Healer of wounded hearts, thy praise we sing. Be thou exalted by seraphs and angels. Be thou exalted with harp and with song. Saints in their anthems with rapture adore thee. Thy be the glory forever. Amen. Amen. It's a wonderful song. He is to be exalted. You can be seated. Thank you. I want to read a Bible verse to you, and then something I don't normally have it done in a while, maybe just do a special for you this morning to help guide our minds and our hearts to what I'm preaching on this morning. Um, the Bible, one of my favorite books in the Bible, and many of you who've heard me preach over the years, you know I love the book of Psalms. And Psalms, I go through the Psalms regularly. I, that's just something I do. When I was a young person, a teenager, when I got saved, my pastor said, read 10 verses of Proverbs in the morning, and that will teach you how to live. And read your devotions, your other chapters, what you read during the afternoon or evening or whenever you do that, or in the morning. And then read a psalm at night, because that's a, that prepares your heart to fellowship with God. Yea, I will command thy loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night my song uh, will be with you. Talking about God's song will be with you. And the prayer unto the God of my life. A lot of times we ought to pray all the time. We ought to pray and be in a spirit of praying, right? Pray without ceasing. But one of the special times of prayer should be in the evening. Your prayer unto the God of your life. And the way you can do that, folks, is if you don't have one of these songbooks or a songbook next to your Bible or in your family, if I had to start my family all over again, I would definitely have a songbook there. Yea, thou commandest thy loving kindness in the daytime. God's loving kindness goes with me. And he will command his song to be with me in the evening, it talked about. Get a song, and what it is, you'll learn from the songs and from the psalm, the book of Psalms, the Psalter uh, of songs, and it'll teach you how to pray. What better prayer for God the Father to answer than a prayer that's started by God the Father from his word and from songs that are based on God's word? Song is very much a part of life. Uh, this one you guys probably already know. Psalm 8 is one of my favorites. Psalm 8 says, verse number 1, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. And he goes on and describes creation and how God has done so wondrous in creation, who has set thy glory above the heavens. God's glory, even above the heavens, that tells you so much about our God. This song I want to sing this morning is simply this, How Majestic is Thy Name. I want you to be thinking about the name of Jesus and what it means to you personally. And we're going to get into three aspects of that name today. One is his name is a mysterious name. You say, Preacher, I know it's Jesus. Well, we'll get to that. And then we'll get to the fact that his name ministers to us. And I'll tell you how. And then we'll get to the, other, the third point about how majestic is the name of the Lord and what that means to you and me. Okay? 
Amy, if you'll play for me. Listen to the words of the song. I love the words of this song. When I consider the works of thy hands, the sun, moon, and stars above, what is man that thou thinkest of him who is so unworthy of thy love? O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is thy name, mountains, valleys, all creation tells thy fame. Heavens declare it, O oh, thy wondrous works proclaim, O oh, Lord, our Lord. How majestic is thy name. Heavens are telling the glory of God. Each tree points to Christ on high. Why would God, the creator of all, Take form of lowly flesh to die. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is thy name. Mountains, valleys, all creation tells thy fame. Heavens declare it, all thy wondrous works proclaim. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is thy name. Wonderful counsel of the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. How majestic is his name. Jesus, creator and ruler of all, left heaven to die for me. And you too. Came to earth, laid aside heaven's throne in exchange for death on Calvary. shalt ever be the same. Amen. Praise to our God who reigns on high. Praise be to him. His great creation tells us he's got everything in control and has everything ready to take care of anything and anyone. If we Turn this on. How about that? Practicing for next Sunday. Usually they have the regular junior, uh, junior church, but today they're going to be practicing some more things for next Sunday to share with us. And I'm looking forward to it. Amen. Encourage the young people. Tell them you're looking forward to next Sunday and what God is going to do in our services. And they'll be doing it Sunday morning and Sunday night. All right. We're in the book of Revelation, chapter number 19. I said that we would go over three different aspects 
of the name of Jesus as we talk about and preach about this wonderful Lord that we have. If you don't know Christ as your personal Savior, uh, if you're watching by way of Facebook or YouTube or even here in the auditorium, or come to Jesus today, the one with the majesticness of all creation. He created everything. And then all the wonderful things about His wonderful name can be yours. Do you remember the verse that I quoted to us? I, just, I think just about every Sunday. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. There are a lot of things happening in our world today that we don't feel very safe about. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Let's run inside the name of the Lord. And that's what I'm trying to get us to do as we look at His powerful, majestic name. Number one, His name is a name of mystery. Mystery, okay? Now, Revelation 19, one of my favorite parts in the book of Revelation is the first few verses of 19. We're not going to read that. It's called the Four Hallelujahs, or Four Alleluias. And, of course, it's dealing where they're going to get into the marriage supper of the Lamb, and also uh, the fact that Babylon is going to be defeated, okay, in the end times. And you come here and you see the wonderful things, and those, those in heaven cry out. Those of us who will be there with the Lord, this is after the rapture. This is, this is at, at the end of the tribulation period, and Armageddon is about to take place. Okay, and there's a wonderful thing happening here because God is going to be praised by those of us in glory saying and crying out four special times, Alleluia! 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 There's a multitude of voices like many waters crying out, Alleluia! Praising to God. And you and I are going to have a part in that. Well, look at this next part that happens right after this. Verse number 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. Now, who is that? That's our Lord Jesus, our lovely Lord Jesus. But here he's coming back uh, for as the ruler. All right? And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. That's my first point this morning. He's coming back at that second coming of Christ with a name that no man knows but he himself. Let's dive into that a little bit. Let's read the rest of the few verses here, though. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called... Can you say that for me, church? The Word of God. That's the second part we're looking at, his name. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. That's going to be you and me. I told my wife, I said, I don't, like, I don't know if I'm going to like that part because I don't like riding horses. I rode a horse one time in my life. I didn't want to do it again. But God's going to change my attitude and my heart. And there I'm going to want to ride behind King Jesus like you and me. And as he gets ready to destroy his enemies, we'll like it then, right? And we won't be afraid to ride a horse. And we're going to be clothed in white linen, or fine linen, white and clean. Verse 15, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. That, now, you need to, if those of you like to, to draw uh, an arrow from one part of your text to the other, circle the word sharp sword and draw it up to the, verse 13, his name is, is called the Word of God. We're going to get to all that in a minute. And it says there, it shall smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Last part of our text this morning. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. We have first the name of mystery. Secondly, we have the name of ministry. The Word of God. His name should be called the Word of God. And then we have the name of majesty, King of kings and Lord of lords. Let's look at this little first part text here. Um, they're praising God in the first part of the chapter. We're not going to read that. 
But God is doing some wonderful, wondrous things, and there's going to be a lot of people in heaven. Some people think, well, I know the Bible teaches there are more that are going to wind up in hell more than in heaven. We understand that. But there are other people that are going to be in heaven that are not necessarily part of the, the church age. Um, uh, we are in the local church age from the time of Christ's resurrection to this day of, this day of grace, these last 2,000 years. And there's going to be a people that will get saved during the tribulation period after the church has already been taken up. We know that there will be many of them that will be saved. Those who never heard the gospel uh, and never had a chance to be saved, they'll hear the gospel and they'll make decisions for Christ, turn to Christ and be saved. That's going to be a glorious time. There are people even in the church age that don't have an opportunity to believe that will be in heaven. Whoa, whoa, what do you mean, preacher? Aborted babies? Hey, man, come on now. Aborted babies. Millions of them are in glory right now. That's why the Bible talks about with much voice, much power, these voices rang out in praise to our God. All right. Anyway, that's a little extra this morning. These hallelujahs, are, they're doing it because Babylon has fallen here in this text and the marriage of the supper of the Lamb that we're going to enjoy in heaven. And the Holy Spirit is describing a name. And he says there, verse number 12, the last part, he had a name, Jesus had a name that no man knew. No man knew this name. Every knee is going to bow before the name of Jesus one day. Philippians chapter 2 tells us that, right? And confess that he, he is God, the glory of God, Jesus is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. All these things will be done. We understand that. But here he has a name that is mysterious, that only he knows. Uh, preacher, I, you got my mystery, you got me thinking here now. It's a name that no man knew but himself. God comes on the scene here in, in heaven. Can you picture these, these armies? These armies are all fighting amongst themselves. They're all trying to get world dominance. And all of a sudden, the eastern sky splits. And Jesus Christ comes, and we're with him. And Armageddon is about to take place. And he's riding a white horse. And he's got, on his, on a, he's got the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But he's got a name that no man knows but him. And he's coming. He's revealing himself to many by different names we know. But this one, this name, he's concealing. Hmm. Preacher, what do you mean? One of the greatest mysteries of life itself is God himself. The Bible talks about God as a mystery. Um, the mystery that God would be revealed through His Son. In Jesus dwells, in Him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Before Christ came, nobody knew what God was like in the sense of dwelling with us in bodily form. And the fullness of God Himself, Jesus Christ, God the Father, God the Holy Spirit indwell Christ. The fullness of the Godhead bodily. And Solomon said these words, Heaven of heavens cannot contain thee, and much less this house I, I have builded. God cannot be contained, you know, in the, even in the house, though yet He chooses now to live in our hearts through salvation. It's all a mystery. It's mysterious. It's a wonderful mystery. But it's wonderfully mysterious even as Jesus is laying there in Mary's arms, a lady's arms, he is still at the same... Kyle, can you get that door for me? He is still at the same time. Look up here, folks. Some of you are going to sleep on me already. You can watch a 30-minute program at home on TV and it'll catch your attention all the way through. Stick with me. We're talking about the God you're going to live with for all eternity and you can enjoy now. Preach, you're getting a little stern. Yeah, sometimes pastors have to do that, right? We need to understand this mystery of God in a baby form, in a lady's arms, is the same one at the exact same time. He's a baby in a baby's arms of a mama. 
He's still upholding all the world and the universe with the word of His power. That's one of the mysteries of God. That God would be in, come down in human form and at the same time keep everything going. His name is mysterious. Think of His mysteries. Deity clothed in humanity. A babe in a manger in Bethlehem comes down in point in time, but he's still the ancient of days. He who is eternity and who knows nothing really of time in the sense of he knows time, but he came down to dwell in time. But he was from eternity past to eternity future. He's the ancient of days. It's a mystery that God would come down in a little moment of time for 33 and a third years. What a wondrous God He is. And this same Jesus is coming back. The one with the mysterious name. Because He's mysterious. He reveals Himself, we know. He's sitting, can you picture Him sitting at Mary's knee? And Mary's teaching Him the Greek alphabet and some of these things. And the Hebrew alphabet. He's the one who wrote the alphabet. He's the one who is the Alpha and Omega. Those are the two Greek ones, letters for the first letter, like our A and our Z. He's the Alpha and Omega. And he's sitting there learning the alphabet at his mama's knee. It's a great, great mystery to us all. He goes to the woman at the well. He's sitting there on the well. He's waiting for her to come to get water. He does, and he says, I thirst. Can you imagine God thirsting? And the lady says, he says to her, give me some water so I have something to drink. He's the living water. And he goes on to explain that to her. Mystery of mysteries, if you please. He took a little boy with five loaves and two fish. <laughs> um, he could have turned the stones all around the little boy and all around the rest of them as the fish and bread. He's a mystery. God came down to be with us. Uh, he was truly a man in every sense of the word. He was truly God. Never did he demonstrate his humanity at the expense of his deity, and never did he demonstrate his deity at the expense of his humanity. He was both God and man. And when he splits the sky, he's still God and man. Stephen being stoned to death, cries up and looks into the portals of heaven and says, I see the Son of God standing there next to the Father. He said, He's there. He saw Him. He's in a glorified body. Who'd be riding? A, a, can we say a horse that's <laughs> glorified? I don't know. But I know He's going to ride that horse. And we're going to be with Him in our glorified bodies. Woo! Glory to God. Oh, because his name is mystery. Hallelujah. I enjoy preaching about my Jesus. Think of the mystery. It's a name is held high. He's got crowns on it. He's a name that no one knows because he's a mystery. His name produces ministry. Look there at verse number 13. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. In him was the Word, and the Word dwelt among us. And, and it goes on, and John chapter 1 tells us the glory, and Him was grace and truth. And this one who is the mystery is also a ministering to us as the Word of God. Is just, you know, that's one of John's favorite uh, terms to use about Jesus. He's called the Word of God. It's a name of ministry. Preacher, what do you mean? It mobilizes us to take care of us that this God this mysterious, wonderful God is now going to minister to us through the fact that He is the eternal, everlasting Word of God. That don't seem to excite you, does it? Come on, get excited about it. He's the eternal, living Word of God. We have the written Word of God. He is the eternal God. In the Old Testament... You had the outsider court of the temple. 
You had the holy, they had the burnt sacrifice and so forth. You had the holy place of the temple. Then you had the thick veil that you went in to where the holy of holies was. Inside the holy of holies where God resided. The Shekinah glory cloud of God was there, right? Okay, what's there? The two angels that graced above the Ark of the Covenant, where the mercy seat was. It's a picture where at Calvary, God showed mercy to us. The veil was written too. We can go directly into, because the blood of Jesus Christ has already been applied in glory. Amen. Amen. Now what's inside that Ark of the Covenant? <clears throat> what's inside the Ark of the Covenant? The Ark of the Covenant is made of acacia wood. It was a certain wood that would not be destroyed. They had to march through that desert wilderness 40 years with that thing. It was covered over in gold as a great protectant, which gold in the Bible is a sign of deity or God. Three things were in the Ark of the Covenant. One was Aaron's rod that budded. You remember that? It showed new life. One day they had that old dead stick laying there and Aaron goes over and picks it up and it's budding. I'd like to go home today, chop off a limb off your tree, and this spring you go outside, you leave it outside, and all of a sudden it's budding. It's a picture of the resurrection where dead stick shot forth new buds and new life. That's Jesus when he did coming out of the grave. And blessed be God, when you, get, when you come out of that grave at the rapture, or if you go by way uh, of heaven through Jesus, that way, if Jesus were to come today, if you, we, you have loved ones, you have friends, you have neighbors, you have church members that we're, you're close to, and they're in the grave right now. One of these days, that dead stick's going to shoot forth new buds and new life. That don't excite you either, does it? What else is in there? Golden pot of manna. Manna was a picture of bread, right? The angels, man did eat angels' food. I've tasted some cooks down through the years that almost tasted what I thought angels' food would be. Of course, I know Chick-fil-A is part of that. Amen. Yeah. What is it a picture of? The bread of life, Jesus Christ, inside the ark. What's the last thing, or really the first thing that was in there? The unbroken law of the Ten Commandments. Remember Moses came down to the mountain, the children of Israel had started worshiping a golden calf. He took the ten, he got so angry, he took the Ten Commandments and threw it down there and it broke in pieces. Later he had to go get it written again and God had it. And he put it, God says, put that in the ark. What is the law? The word of God. What's the picture here, preacher? He ministers to us through himself, the word of God, and through his word of himself, of God, the Bible. What's the picture, preacher? The word is inside the ark, was representation. The pieces of the furniture in the ark were representations of Jesus Christ himself. So that word is inside the word. That word was inside the word. I got news for you. When he spoke the worlds into existence... You go to the book of, of Genesis in chapter 1, there are ten commandments, if you please, that were never broken. Let there be light. And there was light. And he goes on from there. The word of the living God, he spoke it and it ministered to us in that all creation was formed. And man and woman was, vo was formed too as he created man and woman. When you go to Sunday school class and you go to church 
and you hear the Word of God. By the way, those of you watching, and anybody here, uh, if the church you're going to does not preach the Word of God, you need to get out of that church. Yeah, man, I make no apology for that. You are responsible to God for what you hear from God's Word. Okay? Now, I know the preacher can mess up sometimes. I understand that. We're human. But to the best of my ability on my part, and I know our Sunday school teachers, we're going to try to give you the Word of God. And the living Word of God spoke everything into existence. And that same, the Word of God speaks and upholds everything by the Word of His power. And that same Word of God speaks to you and to me. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. That same word of God, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Woo! Glory to God. God. In his redemption, he says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. Say the rest of the text for me, please. By the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Just as the law was inside the ark, the picture of Jesus Christ, inside Christ, is that word that he speaks out that ministers to you and to me. Just as it says in this same text, two things. A sword is going to come out of his mouth to destroy his, his, his enemies. What is the sword a picture of? The word of God. Ah. Uh. Some of you look at me like you're crazy. All right, Hebrews 4. Mm. For the word of God is quick and makes alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. There's not a two-edged sword on earth as sharp as this word of God from the living word of God who's concealed in Him just as the ark contained the law. Mm. piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's why when the Word of God goes forth, people become convicted because the Word of God is to do that, that we might turn to Christ and over our sin and say, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And trust Christ as our Savior, the Word of God that ministers to us. Yes. This wonderful Jesus. This rod, if you please, this rod of iron. He's going to come back as the ruler with the, His Word. His Word will be the law. They come, can you picture them people coming to Him and falling down at His feet? Because He is now ruler over the entire earth. And he gives them his word. I, I, can't help, I cannot help but think of when Jesus was taken in, Geth, in Gethsemane. And they come to take him. And they said, we're looking for Jesus of Nazareth. He said these words, I am. What did they do? Okay, well, let's go. Let's take you. We're going to take you to Pilate. We're going to take you to the, the uh, Sanhedrin. They fell on their faces. Because he who created them and made the entire earth by His Word that ministers to us, is the same one that they fell down in front of. I am that I am. Glory to God. It ministers, and one day it will rule. 
He will rule with a rod of iron. They will do what Jesus says then, right? Look at verse number uh, 14. Wait a minute. Go back to Revelation. Let's go back. You're still in Revelation. I've got to get back over there with you. But I want you to see something. He's the Word of God. He is as that mysterious name because He in Himself is a great mystery. And now is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh. And it goes on to explain the life of Christ. Ah, a mysterious, wonderful name. Then he comes out saying he is the word of God. And then boldly plastered <coughs> on his vesture and on his thigh, verse 16. A name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The Holy Spirit just seems to make a special emphasis there. His name is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. In the sword, he's re going to take, retake the kingdom. In that rod, he's going to rule the kingdom. His vesture catches everybody's eye because his vesture's been dipped in blood. I didn't know this until I was studying this. I've been in the ministry preaching almost 30 years. His vesture was dipped in blood. The battle hadn't started yet. And he's got the blood on the vesture. His precious blood. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. And no other fount do I want to know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. Pilate cried out, and when they told him, they came to him and said, you wrote something on top of his, on the cross, that little sign you got up there, Jesus, the King of the Jews. Pilate, you need to take that down. We only have Ro Caesar as our king. Remember, it was written in three different languages. So anybody at that day and time would have known what it said. They didn't like that. And Pilate, how did Pilate answer? He said, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. And he, he, he ran them out of there. He said, what I have written, I have written. Little did Pilate know. He gave a foretaste of glory divine. That this same Jesus, King, Jesus of Nazareth, the Jews hated Nazareth. Can any, remember in the beginning with Nathaniel? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? They hated that. This, and this guy is a criminal to them. And you're telling us he's our king? No. But little did they know that Jesus of Nazareth became Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords. Yeah. They wanted Barabbas, didn't they? Let us have Barabbas. At least he, he led an insurrection against Rome. This Jesus surely hasn't. You know? You know, the kingly line, if the Jews had studied, gone into the temple archives at the time when Jesus was born, if they'd gone into the temple archives and studied, they would have seen the lineage. The Jews are very particular about keeping the lineage. And they would have found Joseph, although he was adopted, he adopted baby Jesus, he was uh, through his line and through Mary. They have two genealogies, remember that? Matthew tells us the genealogy of Jesus, shows him as king, and Mary is seen, lineage is shown through the book of Luke. Dr. Luke, who's a very compassionate, seemingly, individual, has told a lot of stories, and uh, true stories in the book that God told him to write, the scriptures, all inspired of the Lord, told about the lineage of Mary. So you see the two lines, the, through the father, through the, the mother, though we know that uh, Joseph did not father Jesus, God the Father was the father of Jesus. He's virgin born, by the way. That's all said to say that. And he, he's adopted by my Joseph. And that bloodline ran through God the Father. And it ran, uh, the, the lineage line ran through David, Bathsheba, and Solomon on Joseph's side. And it ran through David, Bathsheba, and Nathan on Mary's side. Right? His claim to the throne, ladies and gentlemen... He was the king of the Jews. If they had their own kingdom at that time, Jesus would have been the one 2,000 years ago who would have sat on the throne 
in Jerusalem on David's throne. The lineage was there. The Lord is then crucified. He's raised from the dead. And now he's going to sit on David's throne as he comes back. Revelation 19 is not the cross so much in view here, ladies and gentlemen. It's him who's coming again. And he who is King of kings and Lord of lords will split those skies. And he is, the armies of all the earth will fall down at his feet. Satan will be defeated, glory to God, and his demons. All those weapons of mass destruction that they were aiming at each other, now they're going to aim at Jesus. That's nothing for him. Out of his mouth came the majestic one, the ministry of the word. And he slays all of them, destroys them. And you know, something we forget, and I'm going to close with this. So stick with me. Psalm 2 says that God will have them in derision. The text there literally means, in Psalm 2 was a prophecy, that God will laugh on that day. The enemies, as they are being destroyed, God will laugh on that day. The Bible says in Psalm 2, 4, He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. And that terrible laughter, ladies and gentlemen, as he's slaughtering his enemies, God the Father is going to laugh in glory because now justice and judgment will have been taken. And God rightly deserves to do that. He's given man and woman multitudes of eons of ages to repent and turn to Him for His love, His compassion, and His salvation, His ministry of the Word to you. You could get to know Him, even though He is mysterious. The same one who cared about a child with five loaves and two fishes can be your Savior. The same God who laid in the baby's manger in the arms of Mary is still holding up the entire universe of the Word of His power. And He can be yours if you want Him. Don't turn Him away. Those you're watching by Facebook, those here in this auditorium, if you've turned away Jesus, there is a judgment to come. Fear ye the Lord. Turn to Him and be saved. Let's pray. They'll know the truth then. Jesus of Nazareth is King of kings and Lord of lords. My dear friend, if you aren't saved, I want to invite you to come to Jesus today. Don't face the wrath of God to come. Face this King Jesus as your King, this Lord Jesus as your Lord, and you will be glad. You'll be so glad. You'll have a home in heaven. You'll have eternal life. You'll have your sins forgiven. And you'll be able to walk with this King of kings and Lord of lords here on this earth as your Savior. As it's the greatest life in all the world. I've been saved for many years, and I have never heard any Christian on their deathbed or any other time say they regret having become a Christian. If you will come to Him today, He'll save you. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God, the mighty God, makes promises, and God, the mighty God, keeps those promises. The majestic Savior, the majestic Lord and King. Please stand. Christian, is he Lord of your life? And maybe there's some things this week you took into your own hands instead of yielding them to him. Maybe there's some things holding back in your hands that you know the Lord wants from you, but you're not willing to unleash your fingers and let him have what is rightfully his. He's king of your life. He's Lord of your life. Surrender all to him. You'll be so glad that you did. God has wondrous things for His children. He loves them. And it's wonderful to worship Him as King of kings and Lord of lords. How majestic is His name. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Come to Jesus today. Uh, Carrie, what's our song? 470. 470 if you need a song with this morning. Those back home, come to Jesus today. He stands waiting. 
470, I have decided to follow Jesus. 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 before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, no turning back, no turning back. All right, you look up this way. Tonight, well, we have preaching and singing, choir at five o'clock, and um, if you're thinking about joining the choir, come see me about it. Uh, then also, um, we're going to have Bible trivia time. So it's on the back of your bulletin. Look up the Bible references, the questions and all. We'll come back tonight and see how well we all do, okay? Tonight, I'm preaching a message. I don't believe, I've been here at Central, I know, over 11 years. Um, I don't believe I've ever preached an entire message on the subject I'm going to preach tonight. I'm going to talk and preach about angels. I'm going to deal with the subject of our heavenly angels tonight, okay? All right. Eric, would you close us in prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day and for the opportunity to bring you home to your house. And Lord, we just uh, thank you for providing for us and blessing us and keeping us safe. And we trust that you'll continue to do so, Lord. And um, we also ask for uh, just a hedge of protection around us and our families uh, from all that's going on, Lord. And um, we trust that you do so. And uh, we just uh, thank you for the message. Amen. Amen. Goodbye. God bless you.